together for 15 years. Live from the 5 Eyewitness News Studios, it's your happy hour and a half. Twin Cities Live. Oh, thank you, Des. It's Twin Cities Live, and it's Friday. Yahoo! Yes, everybody, we made it to the weekend. Elizabeth Reese, how are you? I'm doing great. We should have, like, confetti or something on Friday. <laughs> this has been a very busy week, but it's been filled with fun. We had such a good time yesterday on our Thanksgiving cooking special. Oh, my gosh. What a joy it was to have everybody in the studio making this delicious meal. See, that's why I love Thanksgiving. I, you know, I know you're working on loving Thanksgiving. I'm, I'm a work in progress. I think with you Thanksgiving. like Thanksgiving at work. It's just not at home. Well, yeah, because because <laughs> I'm not cooking. And and generally the thing is like the the reason I I don't have to explain it again is that like my kids don't really like all the traditional food. I know. So it feels like it goes to waste. But here. I like all the food. That's true. And I, and I appreciate all the hard work that they put in, where a lot of times as parents, you don't feel appreciated after doing all the work. Boy, it is a shocking part of parenting that they don't <laughs> tell you about, that your kids are not going to, at the end of every day, say, thank you for funding my very existence and making sure that everything I need is provided to me. The um, amount of times parenting my children that I think there is no way in his L, my parents did the stuff for me that I am doing for my children. My no. parents never provided water bottles, nor snacks, nor even any concern about bedtime or like regulation of any sort. It no, was the no, 80s. I, I know my parents did not measure out my lunchbox compartments to make sure <laughs> to make sure that everything fit just right. And my, my veggies were happy over here. No, I didn't and my do that. I happy measured over... the box to make sure it would fit inside the bag <laughs> that I was ordering online. I know, I'm giving you a hard And you'll never let time. it go. Well, I know, because it's so funny that you actually measured it. You were, it's the I measuring part that I think is kind of fun. I like when I can utilize a tape measure. I feel like it's like, let's... Let's crack. You know what I think here. is really fun is those clothy tape measures, yeah, like you know, like too. the like the seamstress ones that you can wrap. Yeah, around. like the ones that you can measure and be like, oh gosh, is my waist to hip circumference? What's going on here? <laughs> don't, don't do that very don't often. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that very often. Uh, so today I thought uh, it was really cool, and I sort of forgot about it. My bad. Uh, I've been hearing about it all week. Um, Veterans Day is today, being observed today. Yep. Uh, Veterans Day is tomorrow. We want to say a big thank you to all the military men and women who have served. So I was pulling into the, my kids' school to drop off my boys, and I don't know who really did it so shout out to whoever did this um, at our school I'm, I'm talking hundreds of small American flags oh, all down the long drive I mean, it is a long drive to drop off these kids in the back part of the school yeah and, and about every six feet there was a little flag no way every six feet I mean I'm guessing all over the the whole like schoolyard probably hundreds of flags that somebody had to push into the ground. So oh my gosh. thank you. It was really, really cool. Oh, that yeah. is absolutely wonderful. Well, we have a great show planned for you today. Former Minnesota Viking and NFL Hall of Famer Chris Carter is in the studio today. He's helping the Salvation Army kick off their holiday campaign. You're going to learn where you're going to find him tonight. Plus his thoughts on these re-energized Minnesota Vikings. If you know Chris, he doesn't hold back. We love it when he shows up. I love all of his opinions. I ran into him in the, uh, the back hallway already. We've already kind of chopped it up a little bit, so I can't wait to see what he says uh, to everybody here. He's very, very excited, no doubt about that. Uh, also, we're 45 days away from Christmas. We're counting down every day. We're counting down. Whether you like it or not, I don't seem to really love it. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but we are counting down for you. So um, we have gifts for your kids, your grandkids, all the stuff. Um, we have a gift guide for you today with uh, Chris Byrne, our toy guy. He's so good. The holiday gift guide is here. Plus, we're in the kitchen making pigs in a blanket, a classic, mm. with the owner of a fantastic store in the Northwest Metro, specializing in olive oil and all sorts of good treats. You know, we're in full holiday entertaining mode. Mm. But yes, that was good. Any highlights from yesterday's Thanksgiving show that you want to make sure? Because all the recipes are on mm -hmm. TwinCitiesLive.com slash recipes. The show was presented by the Nordicware Factory Store. I mean, I think Paul, I got, I was asked about Paul's wild mushroom rice. Mm -hmm. Wild rice mushroom. Wild rice mushroom. mushroom wild rice. Wild mushroom rice. Mushroom And wild, I said wild, it was wildness. a hit and um, and you should make that recipe. It was really good. It was, it was really good. And I do like the flexibility that he says you can actually use it as the stuffing, which I think would be delicious if it cooked inside that turkey yeah. uh, for hours and hours, or just a side dish. Um, you know the one that I thought would be really easy to make? Uh, look, all the soups were amazing. I was a big fan of the, the pumpkin uh, soup. The, um, the little the crab fritters. Oh, the shrimp uh, the fritters. Shrimp, the shrimp fritters. Yeah. 
Okay, that's not something I would typically go towards. Yeah. But it was so simple. I know. And so easy. Really good. And then when I find out that they're not breaded, I'm like, well, now I'm really in. I know. Those were really delicious. That was Ted Farrell's recipe yeah. from Haskell's. Kelly Coffer from Smith & Trade at Mercantile. She did our beautiful table. She designed the whole tablescape. She came and put out all these beautiful things. And then, of course, Stephanie March from Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine, Joy Summers from the Star Tribune, and Lindsey Brown from Five Eyewitness News. They had the very tough job mm -hmm. of being on our tasting table and you learned how to pronounce the word trivet which you thought was <laughs> trivet and it turns out it's trivet well, listen that you fun, guys huh? you, got, you guys are trying to f fancifies me <laughs> and, and I thought and I see this word up here and I'm like that looks like a French word I know and Ben's like I'm just a low down football player from South Dakota I, I know. know I'm like well that trivet. looks like a trivet and you guys all <laughs> snicker at me and that's no, it's it. You pronounce it just like it's spelled. It's trivet. And I'm like, oh, oh, mm -hmm. oh well. That's okay. the joy of the show. You learn something new. Do you find yourself when when you're telling people a story or they're talking about something, you go, oh yeah, we did that on the show X Y Z. I say that I, all the time, I and then I'm annoyed by myself. More recently now. So now in my in my shortened memory, where things my wires get crossed a lot, and so I'm like, where do I remember that from? <laughs> and most of the time, now I've just trained myself. I probably heard it or saw it on our show. Yeah, you probably. I, I start there, and then if I if I deduct that, then it's something else. You'll learn a lot watching this show. If you missed the show yesterday, don't fear. We're going to rebroadcast it on Thanksgiving Day, so you can gather around the TV. You can join us at 3 p.m. And it'll be great fun to see it again. I, but, you know, of course, Antigone's um, mashed potatoes. Oh, yes. The cheesy three cheese make ahead mashed potatoes. Yeah. I don't know what else to tell you other than if you make those, you will be the MVP <laughs> of your Thanksgiving. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing else more to say about it. Yeah, it, it came in with a really high reputation and it delivered. Not to say, everything else that we had was was fantastic, but I heard about these potatoes for days and days, mm -hmm. and I finally got to taste them. And yes, they were fantastic. So, they're, it's kind of wordy. It's basically a treat, three cheese potato. It's a one to one ratio yeah. of dairy to potato, people, together. And it's scrumptious. Really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up, the uh, toy guy Chris Burn is here with his holiday toy guide. Um, this morning, the toy Hall of Fame inductees for 2023 were announced on Good Morning America. Oh boy! And I gotta say, they hit every one of these right on the head. Okay, so number one, the Cabbage Patch doll. Oh, I loved Cabbage Patch Kids. I thought it was so fascinating how the Cabbage Patch Kids could grow right out of the Cabbage Patch. What sort of an interesting, confusing thing then once you get the birds and the bees talk and you thought kids came out of cabbage patches and you were quite shocked by the actual process. Okay, so no surprise here. I did not put that much thought into the cabbage patch. <laughs> <laughs> I like they're just they're just dolls called Cabbage Patch Kids. I don't know you I you really a lot boy about you it. really I thought a lot about mommy it. daddy where do these come from? Look, and there was it's a, girl, a package. There kid. was a girl at my church, Melissa Radloff, and her parents bought her like every Cabbage Patch Kid. I remember going over to her house and thinking like I had like one hand me down cabbage patch kid if yeah. I was lucky this is what happens when you're a pastor's kid it's really scrounging and uh, and then Melissa had like a whole lower level full of them she also oh, had two no. golden retrievers so she was really living her best life as a kid yeah that actually sounds like maybe a little bit of a problem there when you have that many but I, I guess know. they are collectible I didn't I don't think we ever had one of those because it was just basically for the longest time me and my two older brothers yeah um, I had a pound puppy oh I love the I had pound, a pound puppy. puppy I wonder if that's in the Hall of Fame that deserves know. to be in there no we can ask Chris oh. um, what about the Fisher Price corn popper was just um, put oh, into that the, thing. I have one of those at my house right now, and nine out of ten times I encounter it, I want to smash it. It is <laughs> so irritating. It, it is. It is really annoying. But it. But the thing is, it's tried and true. I mean, it's still as popular now as it ever has been. Anybody want one? I'll give you mine. Yeah. I can't stand it. My in-laws, I'm sure. Maybe we should just donate to one of those smash rooms. I know. Like, Oh my gosh, that's what you do for parents. Just do a whole room filled with those. Yeah. Pa just... Enraged parents would come in and just be like, ah! <laughs> uh, so quickly, the obvious uh, Nerf. I mean, Nerf still continues to innovate. They have all sorts of Nerf things now that uh, are super fun for really adults and kids. Yeah. And then uh, lastly, baseball cards. I, I, I guess, I mean, it's kind of a toy. I mean, it's a collectible. These things are still worth hundreds of thousands of dollars if you can get the right baseball card. I was always fooled because I wasn't very smart as a kid, I thought the high number of ERA in a baseball card was a good thing. Mm. So all the neighborhood kids would trade away what I thought were my bad players. Shoot. I'm like, look how low his ERA is. That's <laughs> terrible. 
And they're like, yeah, here, here, here take it. I don't even know what ERA stands for. It's earned run average, and okay. basically it's the opposite of a batting average. A high batting average is great. Oh. A high ERA is bad. Okay. It's real bad. All right, I learned about ERA, and you learned about Trivet, not Trive. I like Trive. Today. I'm still going to say Trive. <laughs> okay, tonight in St. Paul's Rice Park, local officials and dignitaries are going to be on hand to flip the switch. This is such a beautiful moment. There's a 40-foot tall tree, 25,000 lights, and they're going to be lit up. This is kicking off the Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign, and you are invited. The event starts promptly at 5 30. Yeah, they are not messing around. It's not 531. It is 530. And one of the celebrities on hand to see the tree glow joins us right now. We welcome back former Minnesota Viking and NFL Hall of Famer Chris Carter. Hi. How are you? Good to see you again. Thank you. Great seeing you guys. Thanks for having me back. We love it when you show up. It's well, very thank fun. Thank you. Thank oh, you. This is great. Okay, so this is important to you to get to come and be part of this event. I know you have a connection to the Salvation Army. What do you love about it? Well, Salvation Army was a huge part of my upbringing. Mm -hmm. My mom, um, started having kids at a young age, got kicked out of high school. She had seven kids before the age of 25. Wow. And they're in Southwest Ohio, and as a single parent, you really need a community to be able to assist you. And Salvation Army, through our local church, was able to, especially during the holidays, mm -hmm. as far as gifts, because there's a lot of things that come with being poor, and a lot of it has to do with embarrassment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times during the holidays, not only what you're going to eat, but when you go back to school, do you have anything new? And they made sure not only we had food, but we had clothes, we had gifts. So the family Christmas was better because of the Salvation Army. And then I was approached by Angel, and Salvation Army had a partnership with the Vikings. And we started diving into my past and everything was like, oh my goodness, like he's a Salvation Army kid. Yeah. Yeah. Like how can we do this and do it better? And that's why I've been here, that's why I've been involved in the, the last two events that they had um, there at the Omni Hotel jumping off the building and now <laughs> lighting the Christmas tree. You survived. You're here. Just yeah. barely. <laughs> just, just barely. What was that like when you're, when you're tethered up and you're gonna rappel down? There's, I've never felt anything like it. Were you sweating? Like, what's going sweating? on? Sweating? Like, I wish I was sweating. <laughs> like, you were like, clammy. Yeah, I, I thought something. Frozen. I thought I was going to pass out. Seriously? Like, I'm, I'm just not good high off the ground. But I'm you're, not, you're used to a lot of, like, high-pressure physical events. They have nothing to do with it. Nothing to yeah, do with it. Yeah, no. he's never catching a ball jumping off a building. Yeah, that's fair. No. <laughs> I know, but there's a it, lot of big guys running after you. Yeah, them big guys, though, they're nothing. <laughs> That's the easy part. <laughs> yeah, I've done the repelling thing, and they tell yes. you, as much as you want to trust them, when you're leaning back, that, that, thank you. you're like, I look, I can't lean back any further. Yeah. They're like, no, you yeah. just got trust. Angel has a lot more courage than myself. She's done it the last two years, but this is... But I might need She's to be hypnotized or something. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I, have, I, have, I have a real problem. This could, I think you're doing pretty well, though, with it. I'm proud of you for overcoming your fear. It's impressive. Uh, I wouldn't say overcome. Okay. I just learned how to live with it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, I would like to say because you keep yourself in great shape. If you would have fallen, you would have been. You would have been fine. <laughs> you would have been fine. Yeah, you would have bounced off. You would have shrugged no. off the ground like it's no problem. No, a lady asked me yesterday. Hey, you're a pro football player. How many concussions you have? I said I, uh, I don't know. None that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I would have had enough. So, so maybe, so maybe your brain. We'll we'll figure out if that's in great shape here in the next you know few few 10, 20 years. But your body's in great shape. Yes. We talked about it. We showed some video earlier. What, what sort of workout videos are you doing I mean, these days? What kind of videos are you We found show? a video of you working out, and we're going to show it as soon as it rolls. Just wait for it. Here we yeah. go. This is you. Like, you got to tell us about your routine. I have a great trainer, <laughs> another Ange, another Angela oh in gosh. South Florida. My buddy owns the gym, Johnny O's Gymnasium there in Boca Raton. 6 a.m., three to four days a week, I do CrossFit. Um, I've just been blessed. I love working out. And I'm trying to keep keep everything that I have. But Do you, uh, did you always love working out? Because some athletes, when they're done playing, are like, I don't want to work out anymore. They, it's just they're sick of it. I mean, ever since I was a kid, I used to always get up and run. I used to break into the local stadium. Um, now it's named after me. The guy used to run me off. I used to have a weight vest. I used to jog a mile and a half in the weight vest to the stadium, run the steps, do all type of... Yeah, at 14 years. No way. Yeah, that's when I started. This is like discipline. Where does this come from? Um, I would say just from an early age, I, I wanted to do things at a high level. Yeah. And I knew that the cardio part of it um, 
would get in the way of a lot of players. And I, I try to tell myself that I'm the guy that will do what the other guys won't mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you great. like that challenge. Yeah. Yes. You and, embrace that challenge. And I like to challenge myself. And um, God's given me a lot of ability. And thank God I've been healthy enough to be able to sustain it even after my career. But I'm probably, when I retired from the Vikings, I'm probably in as good a shape as I've been in the last 20 years. No way. That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, you look great. Uh, I was going to say, I want to give you props because a lot of people will post workout videos and they ne- they're never sweating. Like all these, all these fitness influencers, right. they're <laughs> like, and I know that you're not an influencer, but like these, they'll, they'll show a video and like, this is what I'm like, you're not even sweating. So I, I enjoy the fact that you are dripping in sweat because you're really getting after no, it. No, it's happening. It's happening. You're yeah, getting you after it. You can't fake that. Morning. Oh my gosh. So a, so a big challenge that you've taken on personally, how about the challenge that Josh Dobbs took on? The other day with the Minnesota Vikings, stepping in as a quarterback after five days of being on the team. What was your reaction knowing that you've played the game? You've been in a unbelievable with with these quarterbacks. Yeah, we've seen guys have hundreds of practices and they get in the game. Terrible. (laughs) I mean, no practice. I mean, he's a brilliant human being. You look at his resume, what he did at Tennessee, even early in his career, as far as education, the things he went. But to no practice, not knowing the personnel. And the hardest thing is wide receivers and tight ends and their body language. Like, every player has a different rhythm they run to. Like, Justin Jefferson does not run like Addison. Mm-hmm. Uh, KJ doesn't run like the yeah. running backs, like yeah. the tight ends. Like, you got to put the ball. And for him to figure that out during the game and the offensive line, the protection, this is one of the best wins I've seen the Vikings have in a long, long time, especially during the re- regular season. And it speaks to general manager head coach, defensive coordinator. Yeah. yeah. Because all those guys are tremendous questions around the Vikings before they start the season. Those were answered. And since we started 0-3 and, and what they've done since then, amazing. It was fun to you see him do so well. That's awesome. Chris, you're a joy. You know that you're always welcome here. I'm going to get you to co-host this show at some point with me. I'm we, do- we can't do that. Mr. <laughs> South Dakota here, we can't, we, we can't, we can't do that. I just He's won't, I just won't watch it back because then I'll you. get sensitive about it. And no. I'll get, I'm all training a lot of young people on what they should do next in their career. Right. And then how could I interrupt what he's? No, you guys just, have a you guys have a great take a team. Day off, and you're just going to show it. The people would love it, and I'm just going to keep working on you. I'm going to work on you. When you move the studio next to Johnny O's gym in Boca Raton, <laughs> you got to we'll, we'll do three. We can, we can do All a right. Florida trip. See, so yeah, we can. Yeah, you Let's do go to Florida. I like that idea. Chris. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, this Thank is you, really man. good. Yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you. stopping by. Okay, you're going to see Chris at the Salvation Army's annual tree lighting in St. Paul's Rice Park. It starts at 5:30 p.m. So zip over there right after Twin Cities live. I Kat Perkins, who was of course a semifinalist on The Voice, she's going to perform. Plus, free cookies and hot chocolate. Oh, and yeah. Santa is going to stop by. That's the word on the street. Insider tip, the first 200 vehicles in the Lawson ramp get to park for free. Free parking in St. Paul. This is on Everybody What's loves free on? parking. That is like, yes. I think, the, the, big, the biggest benefit to one of these things. So, alright, coming up next, ways to layer your food this fall with dishes for the whole family this holiday season. Free parking is the biggest benefit I, of the whole everybody thing. Everybody loves free parking. <laughs> Nobody wants to pay for parking. That's true. That's right? right. Alright, we'll be back. Host Chat is presented by Pormois Climate Smart Skincare. The proof is in Uli's hands and our faces.